the chapter I'm going to read from Maria Valtorta's Poem of Man God gives us an insight into St Thomas's family background, which we otherwise would know nothing of. It's chapter 362, headed at Rama. Thomas, who was at the rear of the group speaking to Menaean and Bartholomew, leaves his companions and catches up with the master, who is in front with Marjum and Isaac. Master, we shall soon be near Rama. Would you like to come and bless my sister's baby? She is so anxious to see you. We could stop there. There's room for everybody. Make me happy, Lord. I will, and with great joy. We shall enter Jerusalem tomorrow, and we shall be well rested. Oh, I will go ahead and warn them. May I go? Yes, go. But remember that I am not a worldly friend. Do not compel your relatives to spend a lot of money. Treat me as a master. Is that clear? Yes, my lord, it is. I will tell my relatives. Are you coming with me, Marjum? If Jesus will allow me. You may go, son. The others, who have seen Thomas and Marjum go towards Rama, situated on the left-hand side of the road, which I think takes one from Samaria to Jerusalem, quicken their paces to find out what is happening. We are going to the house of Tom's sister. I have stayed in all the houses of your relatives. It is fair that I should go to his as well. And that is why I sent him ahead. Well, if you don't mind, I will go away too. I want to see whether there is anything new, if there is bad news. I will be at the Damascus gate when you arrive there. Otherwise, I will meet you where, Lord, says Menaean, at Bethany Menaean. I am going to Lazarus's house at once, but I am leaving the women in Jerusalem. I will be going alone. Nay, I would ask you to escort the women to their houses after today's rest. As you wish, Lord. Just a pause there. Menaean is mentioned once, I think, in the Acts of the Apostles, nowhere else in the New Testament. He is um, Herod's brother-in-law, but he's a follower of Jesus. And he doesn't become an apostle. Jesus doesn't want him to be an apostle. Um, he's got other role, another role to play. And no doubt it's lost to history now. Maria Valtorta doesn't tell us much about what happens after uh, Mary's assumption into heaven. And so we don't know what role a lot of these figures played in the early Catholic Church. And it was the early Catholic Church. But we learned a lot about Menaean during the public ministry of Jesus. The narrative continues. Tell the driver to follow us to Rama. In fact, the wagon is coming up slowly behind the apostolic group. Isaac and the zealot stop waiting for it, while all the others take the side road, which with a good gradient leads to the very low little hill on which Rama is built. Thomas, who is beside himself with joy and looks even more rubicond as his face is so bright, is waiting at the entrance of the village. He runs to meet Jesus. How happy we are, Master. All the family is here. My father, who was so anxious to see you. My mother, my brothers. How happy I am. And he walks beside Jesus, strutting through the village like a conqueror in triumph. Just a pause for a moment. As it said earlier, Jesus, as Jesus says earlier, he's gone to all the apostles' family homes in order to please them. This is something he's very keen to do, um, very much at their insistence. And it reminds me of Judas, who was pressing Jesus, Judas Iscariot was pressing Jesus a lot over this. And Judas Iscariot feels the same way, the pride of Jesus coming to his hometown, his home village. Continuing. The house of Thomas's sister is at a crossroads on the eastern side of the town. It is the typical house of a well-to-do Israelite, with very few windows, with an iron door with Judas hole, a terraced roof and high dark walls enclosing the garden also at the rear of the house, with tall fruit trees standing above them. Today, the maidservant does not have to look through the peephole. The door is wide open and all the inhabitants of the house are lined up in the hall 
where the adults are busy holding back boys and girls, who, excited at the news, are restless and are continuously rushing to the front, thus infringing the hierarchical order, as the first row, the place of honour, is for Thomas's parents, his sister and her husband. But when Jesus appears at the door, no one can hold the children back. They are like a brood of chickens coming out of their nest after a night's rest. And Jesus receives the impact of the kind, garrulous group who clash against his knees and press him, raising their little faces to be kissed, and will not move away, notwithstanding the fact that their fathers and mothers call them, and Tom gives a few slaps to restore order. Leave them, leave them alone. I wish the whole world were like that, exclaims Jesus, who has stooped to please all the children. At last, he can go in and is welcomed by the more respectful greetings of the adults. What I particularly like is the greeting of Thomas's father, a typical elderly Jew who is raised from his knees by Jesus, who wants to kiss him out of gratitude for his generosity in giving him an apostle, Jesus says. Oh, God has loved me more than he loved anybody else in Israel, says Thomas's father, because while every Jew has one son, the firstborn, consecrated to the Lord, I have two, the first and the last one. And the last one is even more sacred, because although he is neither a Levite nor a priest, he does what not even the high priest does. He constantly sees God and receives his commands, Thomas's father says in the trembling voice of elderly people, made even more trembling by emotion. And he concludes, Tell me one thing, only to make my soul happy. Since you do not lie, tell me, this son of mine, by the way he follows you, is he worthy of serving you and deserving eternal life? Jesus replies, you may rest in peace, Father. Your Tom has a great position in the heart of God because of his behaviour, and he will have a great place in heaven because of the way he will serve God till he breathes his last. Thomas gasps for air like a fish out of water, deeply moved by what he has heard. The old man raises his trembling hands while tears stream down the deep wrinkles of his face and disappear in his patriarchal beard. And he says, may the blessing of Jacob descend upon you, the blessing of the patriarch upon the just one among his sons. May the Almighty bless you with the blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep lying below, blessings of breasts and womb. May the blessings of your father exceed those of his ancestors, and until the desire of the eternal hills comes, may they rest upon the head of Thomas, upon the head of him who is Nazarite among his brothers. And they all reply, Amen. And now, my Lord, will you please bless this house and above all these little ones who are blood of my blood, says the old man, pointing at the children. And Jesus, stretching his arms out, says the Mosaic blessing in a loud voice and he adds, May God, in whose presence your ancestors walked, God, who has nourished me since my childhood to the present day, may the angel who has delivered me from all evil bless these children. May they be named after me and after my ancestors, and may they multiply copiously upon the earth. And Jesus ends by taking the last born from his mother's arms to kiss his forehead, saying, and may the chosen virtues that dwelt in the just man, after whom you have been named, descend upon you like butter and honey, making your name worthy of heaven and adorned like a palm tree laden with golden dates and a cedar covered with royal leaves. Everybody is moved and enraptured. Then they all utter a cry of joy while Jesus enters the house and they stop only when he is in the yard 
where he introduces his mother, the women disciples, the apostles, and the disciples.